Hello, welcome or welcome back to Hazel Jane Tarot. Today I am filming a little bit of a look at a brand new deck to me, but not a new deck that I have just acquired today. So I'm filming this on the 31st of October, um, although I'm sure I won't get it uploaded until later. So hope you had a nice Halloween um, and happy sign um, by the time you've seen this video. So I am not, I always say I'm not a tarot deck collector, but I think I need to accept the fact <laughs> that I am because I just bought this and it was just a chance find. I'll tell you the story of how I find it in a minute. Um, but this is, I believe, the Blushing Fool um, tarot deck. So um, I watched quite a few videos. Um, I, f I came across this yesterday in a charity shop. So I don't know if you have these in, in every country. So they're called charity shops here in the UK. I know in Australia they call them op shops. Um, so this was an Oxfam shop, an Oxfam bookstore that um, I just happened to be in the street and went in with my little girl yesterday to look for some Halloween children's books. And while I was in, I noticed they had some vintage tarot decks in a collectibles cabinet. So they knew what they had here and it was labeled as a blushing fool deck. So. I took it out, had a look at it, tried to memorize some of the details about it and then went home and did some research. So thanks to everybody who's posted videos about this deck. Um, I watched three or four or five different ones. I, I watched Simon at the Hermit's Cave first um, of his unboxing of a deck that turned out to be a blushing fool. And then I watched a few others. Um, Katie Flowers was one. Um, I can't remember all of the different channels that I watched, but I got some information and then was able to go back and have a look at the deck again today. And so some of the things that I think were the things to look for that to show that this was a blushing fill deck was the information on the end, first of all. So first edition 1910, reprinted many times to 1939, second edition 1971. Um, on the side, it says that it's published by Ryder & Co, Three Fitzroy Square, in association with Waddington Playing Cards and Co Limited, apparently that is important. Um, now, if you're an expert on these things, you can feel free to correct me below. I have this is just with the information I've gleaned um, from watching some YouTube videos and reading some websites yesterday. So, set of seventy eight cards. Okay, so it's in this little um, box and it's in really good condition, um, considering that this box this deck was printed in 1971 or 1972 so it comes with this little guidebook and apparently another one of the important things to look for is this information here um first published 1910 this edition 1972 so i haven't read this yet um but this is your little guidebook little white book um, from 1972. Now, what's really, it just struck me that this deck is older than me. Um, 1972, this is 48. My math's not great. <laughs> 48 years old. Wow. So this is my oldest tarot deck then. So it also has these two blank cards, um, which is apparently because at the time that this was printed, they were printed as big sheets and then cut from the sheet. So 78 cards, there was two left over um, and they're just blanks in the box. And then we have the Fool. And if you can have a look, there's a kind of, I mean, it really, it looks a bit like a defect in the printing, like the way the red has been layered on, but it makes his face a little bit pink. And this makes him a blushing fool, apparently. Um, the deck is in really good condition. Um, the, it doesn't really look like it's been used very much. As you can see, there's no copyright on it. Um, so I took it out of the box and had a look at it in the shop yesterday just to make sure that it was okay. Um, and <clears throat> today, when I went back to the shop, I took it out and just counted the cards because they weren't in order. And I just wanted to make sure that all the cards were present. Um, one thing that I did notice is that it has this really lovely, lovely feeling cardstock. Um, it, it has a kind of a papery 
um, soft papery feel um, so it's not laminated at all so it's completely matte but they're really thin um, and I think it'll probably be a really nice deck to shuffle um, you can see there the like the, the edges like they're really really white and not really damaged at all there does seem to be a slight um, gap there like in between when you look at that that's the king of swords so it occurs to me that whatever way it was stacked in the box for a long period of time that that may have been on the top of the pile um because it, it sort of sits more comfortably like that um but the uh so have we look at the cards i have hardly i really haven't properly looked at this yet um so as far as i know this makes this deck a blushing fool um right away smith deck printed in 1971 with this being the 72 second edition so the majors are all out of order i really quite like the colors you know i don't tend to read with the writer rate smith but there's something about this that makes me feel like i might actually get into it that's interesting sort of darker blue there i've never noticed that before the only other version of this that i have is the centennial edition where the colors obviously have been kind of aged um sort of aged in an artificial way i guess because the 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 original images didn't have that color in exactly um there should be squiggly line looks like a, a mistake they just fit they do feel lovely to handle i like the blues it's a really nice it's a really nice light blue One of my favourite cards. I've never noticed that you can see the, the foot through the water before. All that blue, the background detail is not all that clear, but that's just the way the deck is. So basically, when I asked the girl in the shop, the the girl working in the in the Oxfam shop said that she had found in the storeroom during a clear out a number of months ago a whole pile of tarot decks um that there was maybe ten or fifteen tarot decks in this um in this box and that she had then done some research and put them out um at prices that seemed appropriate considering the what she'd find out about how saleable the decks were so there was we had the barbara oh, i'm not going to remember the name now so kind of a dark esoteric a lot of esoteric symbolism oh look at the the emperor's got rather rather the blush as well doesn't he um, there was an Egyptian tarot, there was a, quite a few sort of older decks in this cabinet and the High Priestess as well has got quite, quite flushed looking. Very noticeably the borders are off centre. Um, but, you know, hopefully we can, can ignore that. so she had noticed anyway that these decks were valuable and had put them out on display and she didn't know how long they'd been in the storeroom they'd just been there maybe for could have been there for months could have been there for longer oh dear so um i, I don't need to show you the whole deck because you've seen the writer with smith before but i do i like how this handles i like the peel the paler blue and yellow colours in it. The line work is quite fine. I mean, this is not a deck I ever expected that I would want to own more than one copy of. And before I bought the Centennial Edition, I had done a bit of research into sort of which mass market version. 
I would like the most and had ended up choosing the Centennial and I've never read with it. I just used it for study purposes. I really like how the you know, the greys have been added to give a bit of shape to the clouds. But um, yeah, so when I just saw this by chance yesterday in the charity shop um, and I went and did a bit of research, I just felt really compelled. I dreamt about it last night. Um, and it was funny when I went into the shop today, again, the girl, the same girl was working and she recognised me and said, so did you dream about it <laughs> last night? I said, yep, I did. I see the shading on the blue on the sea. And so I ended up getting this for £60 sterling. And I hope I haven't paid too much. I hope it is what I think it is. Um, not because I'm a collector that I want to, you know, sell this on necessarily or make money on it. That's not why I bought it. I bought it kind of to have it as a kind of a treasure. Um, as a treasure to have. But anyway, it's lovely. It's 1972 tarot deck. It is something that I never expected to want to have. I had a little bit of money left over from my birthday. And this is what it has been spent on. So... Now on this Feast of Cyan, I am going to spend a bit of time cleansing this deck and getting to know it a little bit and when better to charge it with my energy than this blue moon, um, full moon tonight. So I would love to hear um, if you are familiar with the Blush and Fool deck, if it sounds like I have actually found one um, and... Yeah, what your thoughts are on spending silly amounts of money <laughs> on um, out of print vintage editions of decks that you can buy a mass market for much, much less. Um, yeah, so happy, happy sign, everybody. Um, and I'll see you back here again soon, hopefully.